Hey everyone, welcome to Animation Number 18's DVD, Blu-ray, CD update. Collection update. Uh, I have a lot of CDs to get to and one Blu-ray, so let's get started. First, I'm going to talk about a movie that came out this summer, but I'm sure doesn't need any introduction. Uh, Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows Part 2. Now, what you may wonder is why does the cover look so different from anything else? Uh, I got it at Target, and Target had a has an exclusive Blu-ray, a four-disc Blu-ray. It includes never-before-seen 44-minute documentary. That's why I went to Target yesterday and got it. Because I knew if I went to Best Buy or Fry's or whatever, they wouldn't have this. So, you know, I thought, whatever. You know, I really wanted this. I wanted to have the best edition for the last movie. The best edition that you could possibly have and the best resolution and the best picture quality you could possibly have. So that was definitely a must for me. Definitely a must. So that does it for the Blu-ray. I only have one Blu-ray this week. Here's Blake Shelton's CD, Red River Blue. This is the first CD we're going to talk about today. It's a very good CD. If you like good old hillbilly country, this is perfect for you. Because there's a song on here called Hey! So yeah, this is a really good CD. I really liked it, and I'm sure you will too. Flash your flats melt. You may wonder, geez, I thought you had this already. Well, because I haven't made every Rascal Flat CD ever made, but one. I still don't have the old, the, the first one. Uh, the reason why I had it, but it got too cracked, the disc got too scratched to even play, to put in a CD player anymore. So, I had to get a, a, new, a new copy. This is a used copy, and that's why the case is a little damaged, it's a little bit shop worn, but I didn't care because I got what I wanted, the, just the CD, it's all I wanted, I didn't care about that. Okay? Here's Fit in Black, Greatest Hits 2. Some people might be asking, why do you want this thing? Well, I wanted it because he doesn't make a lot of, he didn't make a lot of CDs after this, so it's probably going to be worth a few dollars on eBay someday, and to have the, one of the only CDs he ever put out since Killing Time, no, since Nothing But The Tail Lights, would be pretty cool, okay? Because that Love of the Tail is what I know him from. If you were older, you may know him from killing, from putting out his first D, which is Killing Time. This is a Tim McGraw number one hits. Now, I have every Tim McGraw's recent CD known to man, but I do, I do, I did really want the single off of this, off of this set here. Felt good on my lips, but I liked it. I liked the way it sounded, I liked the feel of it, so. I had to get that too. Had to get this yes today too. Got this today at second spin, a few a few towns away. Now this is the find of the month. I was so excited I got something else this month, but this <coughs> excuse me is an amazing find. I thought I would never see this in a store or anywhere. I might have to pay shipping for it or something. If you guys if you guys are friends with me on Facebook, you know I hate paying shipping for just about anything. So, it's called it's Steve Agar and it's the CD called Fly It Over Here. Now, most of you are asking me who in the heck is Steve Azar? Now, Steve Azar is a country singer who signed on with Ride Record. No one knows what Ride Records is. I don't know what they are either. Uh, they are a record company that signed on, so he was signed to, after his CD, Walk Wait On Joe, went, after his CD, after Wait On Joe and nothing else, 
this nothing else popped up. So his debut CD is what most people remember him from. Fortunately, I don't have that one. I only have this one right now. Like it a lot. If you want to know the singles off of it, Moo on Moo and Sunshine. Those are the singles. I love them both a lot, a lot, a lot. Okay, this is, it should be a good listen. Up next, Martina McBride CD 11. Now, most people may be asking, you are a man. Why do you want this? This is very feminine. Now, or you guys may, may, may be thinking, did you just get it to look at the cover? Now, no, no, didn't do that. I did it because I liked her song, Teenage Daughters. I heard it on the ACMs last year and I absolutely loved it. Fell in love with it when I first heard it. Heard her perform on the CMAs, absolutely loved it. So, I had to go out and get this. I had to do it, I had to do what anyone else would do. Actually, it was on the CMAs this year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Maybe not, I don't really remember. I just know I heard about it on the CMA, it's all I know. I don't know really how that happened or whatever. I just know she was on the CMA and you know. So this is a good CD. She did cover Marry Me, the the, the single from Train's latest from Train's most popular CD they've ever released. Save Me San Francisco. And she used Pat Monahan, the lead singer of Train, in the recording when she recorded it um, as a duet. She basically just used it as a duet. I like that. I like that touch. I like that touch on it. I really do. Pretty cool. Last but not least, maybe one of my favorite CD pickups of the year. Le Le Leanne Rhymes, Lady and Ge Lady and Gentlemen. This is really good. This is not your typical Leanne Rhymes CD. This is really good stuff. Her last one was good. It was called Family. I liked it. I don't know if a lot of people did, but I did. So this is really good. She covered my favorite, my three favorite songs on here, which was she covered Swingin', the you know the 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 eighties song by John Anderson. And Mama Only, the only Mama that a waffle line. That was a great, that was Waylon Jennings from back in the 70s, I think. That was really good. I liked that a lot. And then I liked her, her single on the CD, her, the one, the new song, you could say. It was called Give. I liked it. It was, if, if you guys watched the America's Got Talent season finale this summer, that, it was, she performed it with, 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 the, with the group, remember Silhouettes, who make those amazing, amazing acrobats and ac acrobat stuff. Oh my lord, they did. They were dancers, but you could call them acrobats. They're doing the same thing, you know, whatever. It was good. The CD's good too. I liked it a lot. Now, we're going to talk about what I watched this week. Ah, uh, this is cool. I watched Troll 2. I have the MGM double sided disc Troll 1 and Troll 2. I've visited my second copy I've gone through because a friend of mine lost the copy <coughs> I let her borrow. So had to go out and get a new one. But she paid for it, probably she had to. Okay? Yeah. So yeah. So this is a this is, some people might be saying what makes you, what makes you, what, what, why does this make you feel so good inside? Well, that's an interesting one. Because, let me put you this way. There are some movies <coughs> that are so good they're bad, okay? That's what this is. That's what it's supposed to do to people. It really is. It's supposed to make people think this way, so that's what they try and do. We're almost running out of time now, so I'm going to talk about one last movie and then it'll be almost time for me to stop. Here's Best Worst Movie. The story behind the worst movie ever made, Troll 2. This is a great documentary. I urge any documentary lover or her to pick this up. Or any Troll 2 fan, mind you, to pick this up. I uh, I had two Troll 2, two fans of the 